One of them is uh, buying versus renting. What you think is best? You know, it's really interesting. Believe it or not, the answer can be either. I'll, let me explain. Obviously, when you're buying, you're, you're creating institutional value and wealth creation, and over the long period of time, that becomes an ROI positive thing. Buying real estate has been tried and true in our society for a hundred years, right? And, and yeah. plus, so I'm a fan. However, I see a lot of people overextending themselves on the buy, which then takes their cash out of the equation on other things. Of course, if you bought a home 10 years ago, you would have done well, but if you put that same money into Amazon stock and just rented, you would have done much better. Yeah. And so people don't think about options. So is buying a home usually, as long as your neighborhood doesn't go to shit out of nowhere, an ROI positive financial event over time? Yes. Does it multiply the same way that if you made a smart decision at that time with that same cash? No. Number two, most people when they buy, extend themselves too much. They buy the most expensive house they can. They wipe all their liquid on the down payment and then they kind of live their life to just make their mortgage payments. And it takes them out of opportunities. You know, I, I bought a lot of stock during the pandemic the first week. Yeah. Netflix, Amazon, they were at like record lows. Now a month later they're at record highs. Like yeah. that was an opportunity, but if you didn't have cash to do that, you missed it. So the answer is both. You have to be thoughtful on it and you have to know where you are in your life cycle and more importantly, what are you gonna do with that cash if you're renting? Because just sitting on the cash versus buying, that's not a good idea. Yeah, because a lot of people don't not as smart as you when it comes to stocks and when to buy and what to buy. And, 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 they, and a lot of people more more familiar with property. And especially some of our mutual fan base, if you're in areas that are on their way up getting genderfied, getting cleaned up. You can buy some homes in places that used to look kind of dirty. Yeah. You know, you can start buying up those homes on the cheap and really doing quite well. There's a couple of places I'm looking at in Jersey on that. So it, it listen, or you could go buy a house in what used to seem like a good neighborhood, but then they put some sort of change to the highway and it fucked your shit up. Like, listen, everything's a gamble. To your point, DJ Paul is, is the number one thing I want people to do is buy what they know. Even though I hate them because I hate the bulls with all my heart, I told all my friends, I didn't do it because I had too much emotion, but I told all, all my friends to buy Scotty Pippen rookie cards, right? Uh huh. I'm gonna pull up the thread actually. This is some crazy <laughs> shit. I told all my friends to buy them because I knew this, this documentary was coming, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. and that so. That documentary is crazy. And so that rookie card went up from 30, from literally from 30 to, to 300. And wow. you know, that's it. Like that's 10 X on your return. And anybody could have done that if they were paying attention. Yeah. You and so, so bet on what you know. Uh huh. The next question, uh, my last one, then I get out of here. Uh, is if you have like I own a lot of multi-million dollar homes in in big cities that I rent out, and I saw somebody say that if you have a house, now is probably the time to sell it because millennials not going to be into homes as much. What do you think about that? What I think about that is if you're renting out those homes, you're going to win because there is a movement in the youth to not buy but to rent, and they're still going to want to live in fancy places. So you're going to be making the value on the ownership, I, I I think it just comes, I actually think the renting market is gonna explode in the premium market. So if you're sitting on that kind of inventory, I actually think you're sitting well. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, you're have, I, think, I think you're gonna have more demand. I think you're gonna be able to increase those prices. I, I thought the same thing too. I just didn't know what security be more an issue and what they go for condos versus a standalone home. No, there are plenty are going to go for standalone homes because a lot of them are going to buy into what I'm saying, which is like, don't own it, have it five years. Where you could get caught, it, it, the only variable there that can really get caught is if you go through years of everybody renting and then one year the market switches and people go back to buying homes, then you'll need to sell it. But I think you'll make the institutional value 
over that time, listen, good property is good property always and forever, period, whether it's renting or selling. Yeah. Period. Uh, so I work uh, insurance right now. And the first question I have is, how can I bring value um, in and as a consumer for you, Gary, uh, what would you say on this? Uh, how can I bring value without coming across as a salesman? One more time. How do you bring value as to other people to then do business with you? Yes. By watching what I do, right? Like there's a lot of people who buy their wine now from my dad's store or from Empathy Wines because I bring them value at, at all times, and then occasionally I mention what I do or what I'm passionate about, right? So the way you bring value without being too selly is by not being selly. <laughs> right, but okay, But also, so... like the last lady, being okay with asking for the sale once in a while. So you put out mm -hmm. as much content, whether it's about Kansas, whether it's about esports, whether it's about insurance, whether it's about, you know, beard culture. You, yeah. you you get people to know you. I'm being serious though. The beard, your beard might be the single reason you sell the most insurance. And because nobody, you know, insurance is boring. That's what I'm saying. Like I know, like, I know what you're saying. Why do you think there's Geico and Progressive, like, and the like, Flow and like Snoopy for MetLife? Insurance is so fucking boring. They have to create like characters. Right, and I don't want to do like what you've said in, in an interview before is like I don't want to sell fear. You know, that's right. one reason like you said that you wouldn't sell insurance is because of like how you sell it, you know? Well, I would sell practicality though. You know, okay. some people are like, what if he dies? You know, that's fear. But if you're like, hey, listen, unfortunately, as we all know, one day something will happen and it's nice to have this in place, right? Mm -hmm. you, see where I'm, you see where I'm going? Right. So, and, uh, go ahead. Okay, and sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but you're I, not interrupting I, me ever. <laughs> uh, so the second question, though, really, is um, how does someone find their passion? By tasting things. Like, how do you know if you love surfing if you've never fucking surfed? Mm -hmm. And like, I listen to you all the time say that, man. And so I, I figured that would be your answer. Um, so let me ask you a question to make it even more valuable to you, brother. What do you think might be your path? If I'm like, yo, bro, 30 days, you're just gonna do 30 different things. Like, what are some of the things that come to mind? I mean, music, um, yeah. I love cooking. <laughs> Have you ever made a video on YouTube of you cooking something? Uh, not like a video, but like I've posted like what I've cooked. What about a video? Why don't you make a video tonight, take your phone, set it up and cook and put it and post it on YouTube and post it on IGTV and see what the fuck happens. Okay. That's actually how you do it, brother. Right, and I've been I've been working on that. Like, I mean, that's why I'm on this video right now. Like, I will admit, like, it's, it's execution. Like, you're absolutely right. It always I mean, is. You, you posted twice about Tea with Gary V yesterday. I said, hey man, like, it's my birthday. Can I get on? I didn't hear anything. And like, I really wanted to talk to you and get these things answered. So I asked again. And that's when you hit me up. And I happen to see it. And that was that's rare. You know how many people right. watching right now have asked me 4,700 times to be on Tea with Gary Vee? It's all serendipity. But if you didn't, if you didn't ask the second time, I wouldn't have seen the tweet and we wouldn't have this moment right now, bro. It's execution. It's always execution. Everybody plays out life in their brain instead of with their hands and their legs. Mm -hmm. Fucking you have to do. It's only doing. Everything that plays in the head is all insecurities and, and fucking bullshit. You gotta take fucking positive thoughts and put them to action. It all comes down to not giving a fuck what people think. This is why I spend so much time on it. You know, it's being strong enough to put up that cooking video and being okay with people in your life texting you and being like, what the fuck are you doing? Which you then reply to, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out yeah. of my fucking cooking YouTube video. You worry about you, mom. Mm -hmm. You worry about you, Rick. You worry about you, boyfriend. Like, what do you mean what I'm doing? I'm living my fucking life. What the fuck are you doing? And, and that, I have... For everybody who's watching right now, when you do something, because you get inspired right now and do something new, and somebody goes, what the fuck are you doing? Reply with ease. What do you mean what the fuck am I doing? I'm doing what I want to do. What the fuck are you doing? Get out of my fucking life. Because I do, rather than focus on, on that, I do tend to focus more on actual 
valuable content. So I don't really post a whole lot of stuff of, oh, I sold this house or, oh, I sold that house because I feel like people don't really give a crap. Like, yeah. unless I sold it to them, yeah. they don't I, care I mean, <laughs> that look, I sold it. I would say here and there spreading that out isn't bad because mm-hmm. it shows people that you are selling homes, which is mm-hmm. fine. Um, yeah, I think I think your question is predicated on a social media question. Uh, a per, excuse me, a social media perception question versus an actual business question. What if one of your videos goes viral on TikTok and that becomes the thing that most helps your business? That's not mm-hmm. something that would have happened if you most focused on just getting the most followers you can on one platform. People are absolutely mm-hmm. obsessed with figuring out how to get followers when what they should be figuring out is how to get happiness and how to get the business result they're looking for. And followers are an indication that you're hitting a nerve and people are interested, but pe- but that's the byproduct, not the goal. Okay. And I think people are making it the goal and that's where their strategies are breaking down. That makes sense. So that's don't it. worry as much about the followers and worry more about where my leads are coming from, so to speak, and how many slash, people are slash, actually contacting Slash me. realizing that you're in other places that you're learning and that Mm -hmm. something may happen somewhere that you could have never seen and that then like something may happen on TikTok that makes you say oh now TikTok needs to be 50% of my energy and the rest need to be 5% each but you would have never known that if you weren't giving 5% of your energy to TikTok. Mm 